Hello, this is Mike Lively, and this is Professional Paper Vision Chapter 1 on Coding Animation. And in this chapter, we're going to build an animation engine that you're going to use throughout the book. And we're going to show you how to do it first in 18 lines of code. And then utilizing CS4, we're going to do it in 13 lines of code. So let's learn a little bit about animation engines. Basically, an animation engine consists of two major parts. On the first part, you actually grab the imports, set the initial parameters, and create graphical elements. On the second part, you can have three possibilities. You can render a frame, display a frame, and alter a frame. Now, sometimes this is all one step, or other times it's actually separated into different classes. But what you want to do is actually make that go around in a circle and iterate that over and over again. So you can see this loop right here is created by a listener. And in our particular case, we're going to use an on enter frame listener. Now you can use a timer as well, or you basically can have an event listener which listens to see if your mouse has rolled over something. There's a number of ways to do this. But in this particular animation engine we're going to show today, you're going to actually use the on enter frame listener, and each time you hit a frame, you're going to execute a series of commands which essentially updates your screen and causes your animation to run. Now before we proceed, I want to make clear that this is not like timeline animation. If you open up Flash, you can do all types of animation on the timeline, but what we're creating here is programmatic animation. So the first part, once again, is bringing in those imports. So let's scroll down here and take a look what the book has to say about that. And there's three parts we're going to go through here first. We'll start by importing the sprite class, because we're going to use the sprite class to create our object, our animation piece. And uh, then you're going to set some initiations. So you're going to set your Z positions, basically zeros right in the plane. The animation angle, that's actually going to be the angle you iterate to cause your animation engine, in a sense, to run or iterate, or iterate through your animation. We'll show you that in a moment. And finally, the focal length. So the focal, where does focal length come from? That comes from the perspective scaling equation that you've learned about earlier in this chapter. So if you're not sure about what perspective scaling is, then go ahead and review uh, the previous uh, videos in this chapter. But basically, all of animation for Flash and a number of engines out there for 3D are run on perspective scaling. So what you're going to do now is create the ball. So once you've brought in the imports, you want to instantiate your ball. So you're gonna, the ball is going to be a sprite, and you put new sprite right here. So the first thing you want to do is instantiate your, your ball. So basically your ball is a sprite, and you just create a new sprite. Then you want to basically go through a series of typical graphical drawing programs. So if you're familiar with Flash, uh, you, you're familiar with these. First of all, your ball and your graphics, you begin fill, and you put the fill color in there. In this particular case, it's red because FF is red in hexadecimal. Then you want to draw a circle. Here's just a can program, dot draw a circle. That's going to be a radius of 40. And finally, you want to end that fill. So that actually draws your uh, graphic on the screen. And once you've drawn your graphic on the screen, very important, you want to add that graphic to the screen using the add child method. Now add child is just very typical of what happened between the transition from Flash 7 to Flash 8. Flash 8 had this whole new architecture. We're going to talk about that in the next video on uh, basically this layering add child and what all that means. But specifically all that does is take the ball that you've instantiated over here and you're going to take that ball that you've instantiated and you're going to basically add it to the stage. And once it's added to the stage you can refer to it by this name and cause it to oscillate based upon, that's right, this oscillation parameter that you're calling my angle. So we're going to get to that right now. So the next thing you want to do is pretty much add that listener. So coming back to our animation graphic, basically what we've done to this point is to bring in our imports and to create our graphical element. Now we want to essentially add a listener so we can essentially iterate through these animation routines. So let's go to that right now. So the heart of creating a programmatic animation engine is the listener. And we've used Add Event Listeners before, and if you're not familiar with this, make sure you go back and review the uh, Flash introductory course where we cover that. But basically, the Add Event Listener has two parts. It has basically the listener, and it has the um, method that's going to fire each time the object that it's listening for occurs. So in this particular case, we're going to use an on inner frame listener. Let's go down a little bit and take a look at that. Very simple, just add listener, event, that's the method, and then dot enter frame, that's the actual uh, property. And so each time a frame occurs, it runs the animation loop or runs this method, which is on inner frame. Now, let's say this real quick, that what is on inner frame? Well, basically that means that each time 
you have a frame. So in flash, you might have 15 frames a second, 30 frames a second, whatever you set it for. In flex, you have the uh, standard 24 frames a second, which means there's going to be a loop every 24 times a second. Now you can change that, of course, in flex. That's just the uh, basically the base uh, animation or the, the default animation. So here's our method on inner frame that fires each frame. And the first line, basically what you do here is you scale based upon the perspective scaling equation, which has focal length divided by focal length plus Z. So you can see as Z gets larger, basically scale gets smaller, and that's pretty much all there is to 3D animation in Flash. And you have this angle right here that's iterated uh, every time you have a little uh, frame transition. So this angle is being iterated. And as the angle iterates, basically what happens is it goes in the sine and cosine, which causes your ball to basically oscillate in a circle. You're going to be oscillating in a circle. And that's kind of boring, so you actually want the ball to get smaller and larger. So you add another equation, and that's basically going to change its Z position right here. And by iterating that Z position, your perspective scaling changes right here, and it makes your ball actually oscillate in and out of the plane. Now it's written very nicely here. Upon every loop, the my angle variable is iterated, and the ball X and Y positions oscillate sinusoidally. This creates a circling motion of the ball. And the last line of the code, the Z position variable, oscillates sinusoidally as well, causing the ball to cycle in and out of the screen. Putting these two motions together, your ball will spiral in and out of the screen in the Z direction. Hey, let's bring up the code and just see what happens. So here we are in Flash, and here's the code we've been discussing, our animation engine in 18 lines. And let's go ahead and run it and see what it does. So it's a very simple animation engine with a ball oscillating in a circle, but actually moving back in Z and forward in Z. And here it comes. It's going to come out of the plane. And now it's actually oscillating out of the plane. You can't see it, but it's going to oscillate back in. And that's pretty cool. There's a number of very important concepts that kind of come out of this that will be used throughout the book. So let's go and take a look at those real quick. Because remember, before there was paper vision, there was this these animation engines that were being built by everybody and paper vision came along and kind of standardized all this so what you see here is a loop or renderer which is a very important concept you get a perspective z coordinate you see the idea of projection onto a viewport basically you're projecting this onto the xy screen and uh, you get the idea of a primitive or basic shape like the red ball that you have oscillating and the addition of a material or color but let's go back up to our animation graphic there we have it all we did was import our basic imports, create our graphical elements. Then all this was one uh, function right here in this particular case, which basically we had our event listener that listened to that. And uh, upon every frame, this loop was executed, and your ball's position and size was changed. And that's all there is to building an animation engine in Flash. And we're going to use this scheme right here over and over again throughout the book.